Hello. I'm David Niven. This is our new series, The Star and the Story. Now, each week, the star selects the story that he or she thinks would interest you most. This week, I have selected a story called The Thin Line by Frederick Brown, the screenplay by Frederick Brady. At this point, I'm supposed to tell you what the story is all about. But you know something? I decided not to. So you sit right where you are, and I hope you'll enjoy my selection. Thank you. Up, I see. Right as a dollar. Don't talk to me like that, Red. I'm too big to have my head patted. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. It's just that in here, everybody's too nice to me. Out there... Well, what I mean is, if they want to get you back on the track, out there, everybody isn't nice to you all the time, not, not even your friends. You know, I was talking to the doc. He thinks you're ready to be out there. Oh, I sure am, Red. You don't mind my calling you Red, do you? I told you I didn't, Mr. Marlowe. Yeah, that's right, you did. Didn't I tell you to call me Johnny? Call me Johnny. <laughs> okay, Johnny. That's fine. Red, Johnny, Red. Hey, I know why I call you Red. There was this piano player in my band once. He had a shock of red hair just like you. Red... Red Benson. Red Benson, yeah. that's right. I always used to say that Red ran his fingers right through the keys the way you'd run your fingers through a beautiful woman's hair. And that's the way it sounded, too, when he played. He'd reach out and grab handfuls of it. Handfuls of piano. Thirteen he could hit. Thirteen keys. I wonder what happened to Red. Well, he died a few years back, remember? Oh, yes, that's right. Yes, I wrote a song for Red when he died. I called it the Red Benson Blues. Yeah, I remember. It featured me trading the sax and the piano. Yeah, the piano sounded like it came from another room. That's right. Yeah, that was meant to be Red. Then we'd counterpoint the theme and... Yeah, I wonder what happened to Red. They'll come back, Mr. Johnny. Exercise, that's all they need. He can still arrange and conduct. He can hold a baton and later on... Well, I can light a cigarette. Red, don't you think I'm insane? Of course not, Johnny. I don't think you ever were... You don't think I was ever crazy? You think I was sane when I... Tried to kill my wife? I don't think you did try to kill your wife. What? You and who else? Well, a lot of people. Oh, why can't I remember anything? I can't even remember that night. Listen, we haven't got much time. You'll be in Dr. Clausen's office in a few minutes. I want you to pass the test and get out of here. You'll be all right once you leave this place. And your memory will come back a little at a time when you're in the right surroundings. All right. Brief me again, Red. It didn't do any good last time, but let's try it again. You're Johnny Marlin. The Johnny Marlin. You play the best sax and clarinet in the business. You nearly won the jazz pole this time last year. I did play clarinet and sax, but not any longer. Can't you get that through your head? I wish I knew how much you remembered of what I told you the last month. All right, I'm Johnny Marlin. I was born June 1st, 1918 in Boston. Of poor but honest scholars who were scandalized when I graduated through the nightclubs of Boston instead of through Harvard. He won't be interested in the jokes, Johnny. That's right. There's not much humor in here, is there? I think I've got it all right up until the time I was invalided out of the army in 1943. There was this night landing in an LCI and we took a direct hit. Can you imagine a direct hit, Red? No idea what one shell will Skip do. Skip that part, Johnny. They say that's the reason for your temporary blackouts. Now, do you remember the places you've played at, the bands you've played with, and everything I've told you about them after the war? Pretty well, yes. Now, what happened in early 47? I got married to Kathy Cortine, the Kathy Cortine, who owns a slice of Chicago and has more money than sense. She'd have to have to marry me. We were married the 14th of June, 1947. Why did she marry me? Well, why shouldn't she? You're Johnny Marlin. That's what I mean. Have you ever seen Kathy Red? I've seen pictures of her, newspaper pictures. She's beautiful. Even with a scar across her throat? Look, Johnny, I'm gonna give you the whole pitch all at once. The reason you're still here. 
You do all right in a question and answer period. But when you get ready to leave Dr. Glasson's office, somebody comes in behind you. Somebody you should recognize, but you never do. You must tell me who it is. Who is it, Red? I don't know, Johnny. You haven't got any relatives. I know it isn't Kathy. I imagine it's always some of the fellows from your band. But I don't remember anybody. I don't remember any of the faces. I remember a few of the names. There was Dave, Jim, Harley, Smiley. Who were the others, Red? Sam, Willie, Harry. Well, how can I make it stick? How can I put the right names to the right faces? I don't know, Johnny. I don't know. But at least you know what you're shooting for. Something may click, an expression, a mannerism, something. Oh, I'll never make it. I'll never make it. You'll make it. You've got to make it. Come on, Johnny. I'll take you down to Dr. Glosson's office. <laughs> Fine place you had to knock to get out. Hey, Johnny, you please remember something? What's that? Don't look at your hands. You say kind of foolish things when you look at your hands. No, that won't do either. You look like you're consciously hiding them. Come on, John. Your memory shows much improvement, Mr. Marlin. Thank you, Doctor. You may smoke now if you wish, Mr. Marlin. Thank you, Doctor. No, thank you. I'm very happy with our discussion, Mr. Marlin. Very happy indeed. Most of us here feel that your complete recovery could be accomplished much quicker if you were living in more familiar surroundings. You may return to your room now, Mr. Marlin. I want to think about your case for a while and perhaps discuss it with my colleagues. That will be all for the moment. Thank you, Doctor. Smiley? Johnny! Johnny, it's good Smiley. to see you. Smiley Hayes. But don't tell me you're crazy, too. Is that why you're in here? <laughs> oh, no, I came here to get you. That is, if it's all right with the doctor. Yes, I think it is all right for Mr. Marlin to leave. Your reactions are normal, your memory is still a little impaired, but that will improve gradually once you get home. Yeah, I, I think so too, Doctor. Do you have any plans? No. Good. Now, don't overwork again. Just take it easy for a while. We'll take care of them, Doctor. There are a few forms for you to fill out to complete your release, and then you can go home. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Good old Smiley. <laughs> <laughs> You sure must hate this place, not waiting to pack or anything. <laughs> I don't want anything that ever reminds me of it. I'm even going to throw this suit away as soon as I get home. <laughs> home? Hey, where is home? Where do I live now? Same place. Carlton? Oh, the Carlton. Strange that Kathy would want to live on there. Look, let's, um, let's walk around a bit. Huh? Let's go and get a drink someplace. Sure, anything you say. Come on. Kathy know we're coming? We? Oui. I'm just going to drop you off at the building. No, she doesn't know. You asked the doc not to tell her, didn't you? Yes, I, I didn't want a reception, you know, not a yes. friend. Thought I'd walk in there quietly. And I asked him not to tell her, but he probably did, just to warn her to put away the knives. Oh, Johnny. Smiley, you've got to let me have it straight. Would you put some more music on for us, please? Anything special? No, just anything. 
Now give it to me. What happened that night? The night that I tried to... What happened? Well, I... I... I um... Look, can't you forget it? How can I forget it when I can't remember it? I must know before I face Kathy. Now, what happened that night? Well... Look, you'd been working close to 24 hours a day trying to put the band over. We all tried to get you to slow down, so did Kathy. Oh, skip the improvisation. Just give me the melody. Okay. Well, that night after we got through playing at the hotel, we rehearsed some new stuff, real late. You acted funny then, Johnny. You forgot things, and you're sort of blacking out. You had a headache. Well, we made you go home. Wouldn't let you work any longer. You left real mad. Well, when you went home, you, you sort of went off your rocker. Picked a quarrel with Kathy. I don't know what you accused her of. You must have gone out of your mind for a minute. And you, you got your razor. More? More. I tried to kill her. Then you cut your own wrists. Kathy came to and found you bleeding real bad. And hurt as she was, she got some tourniquets and put them on your arms and held them. And then she started screaming until she woke one of the servants who called the Carlton House doctor. Well, that's... That's all, Johnny. That's all. She, she saves your life. Even after... Can he ever come back to you? Nothing. Oh, Smiley, look at me. I'm a gentle guy. I am, really. I like to laugh and have fun. Do I look like a man who... But that wasn't you. That was someone else. But who? Who is this man in here? What is this thin line that divides me from him? How thin is it? Is it as thin as a tightrope? And if I fall off, do I fall on his side or my side? But you're all cured now, Johnny. You don't have to worry anymore. That's right. I won't worry anymore. Yeah, it's a real glow, that sex is giving out this. <laughs> yeah, I'll say it's glowing. <laughs> That's the record we made. That's you, Johnny. Don't you remember? Johnny, what's the matter? Johnny! What's the matter with you? Are you crazy or something? That's entirely debatable. Sally, put that plug back in. Don't do it. A man can turn off his own music, can't he? That's Johnny Marlin. Johnny? Everything all right? Well, Sure, Mr. Marlin. Give us two more drinks. Yes, sir. Don't you think you ought to go home now, Johnny? I just can't face walking in on my wife and not recognizing her. What are you talking about? Of course you recognize Kathy. You recognize me. No, Smiley. I didn't recognize you. I still don't remember you. Marlin in? No, sir. I'm Mr. Marlin. Did she, uh, 
Did she go out for the evening? No, sir. She was expecting you. She became worried when you didn't... She went out to look for you. Where did she go? I'm sure I don't know, sir. She'll have a difficult job finding me out there, now that I'm in here, won't she? Yes, sir. I don't think I know your name. What is it? It's Betty, sir. Oh, Betty, does Mrs. Marlin have a key? Why, yes, sir. Don't you think it would be all right to shut the door? Mrs. Marlin said I could have the night off. I was just wondering if there was anything I can do. No, enjoy yourself, Betty. Off you go. I'll make myself comfortable. Thank you, sir. so frightened when he didn't come home. I'm sorry, Captain. Oh, I've missed you so. You don't know. Oh, my own darling. Why have you back with me again? And we'll always be together now, won't we, darling? Always. I love you. I love you, too. I love you very much. Just a thin line. I don't look at it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, how could I have done such a thing? Darling, you can hardly see it. The plastic surgeon said that in one year it'll be gone. Gone and forgotten. Clever man, that plastic surgeon. You think he could reach inside and remove a scar from my mind? Johnny, please. No, he couldn't do that. Maybe it's better not to be able to remember. Maybe it's a blessed thing not to, to be able to remember a moment of horror. Oh, Kathy, you've been so good to me. You're not a bit afraid of me, are you? Oh, darling, no. Of course not. Let's... Let's have a drink to celebrate, huh? All right, Johnny. Anything you want. Good. Well, Johnny, I gave away your saxophone and your clarinet. I didn't think you'd want them around. The doctors say that you can't play anymore anyway. I suppose they told you that. They didn't have to. Oh, darling, I'll make it up to you. It'll be wonderful. In a way, it was your music and band that came between us, and it won't now. Johnny, you don't have any idea of starting another band, or you mean directing or something? No. Oh, darling. Oh, darling, it's going to be so wonderful. Now we can do all the things I wanted to do. Travel all over, follow the sun, huh? Well, we can live in the Riviera, go to Monte Carlo, skiing in Switzerland, come home, stay away, anything at all. It's going to be just great. How well, lucky we are to have your millions. Now, Johnny, don't start that. Not when I'm feeling so happy. Let's put on some music, shall we? Some of mine? Are you sure you want to? I might as well get used to it now, all at once. Okay, Johnny, anything special? Oh, just put on anything at all.
Oh, that's all. Don't touch it. What's the matter? I remember. I remember. Now I remember. That record. I came home that night exhausted. I put on some music because I thought it might relax me. It was too loud and it woke you up. I remember. You came out of your room and you ripped the arm off the music. Johnny, you better not try to remember anymore because that's when you went and got the razor. No. That's when we started to argue. The same old argument. You hated my band, you hated my working. Because you loved me, you said that you hated my music because it took me away from you. The same words, I remember the fury in your face. Then I started to slip into a, a black pit of exhaustion. I started to black out, just the way I'd done several times since that night during the war. But each time before this, I'd come out of it all right. This time when I came out of it, I didn't do it, Kathy. Johnny, you're exhausted. You're all mixed up. No. Who would want to dance to the music of Johnny Marlin anymore? The man who tried to kill his wife. You did it, Kathy. I? My own throat? Yes, just lightly. The deep cuts you saved from my wrists. Why, Kathy? Why did you do it? My music never took me away from you. I made love to you every time I played. That's what made my music so good. You're crazy, Johnny. You're out of your mind. You tried to kill me, and then you tried to kill yourself. Everybody knows that. Everybody but you. Everybody but you is afraid of me now. But you're not, because you know you don't have to be. That's why you stayed on in this apartment. You knew I was coming home, didn't you? Didn't Dr. Glasson call you? Yes, he called me. You knew I was coming, and even then, even then, you didn't hide the razor. You did try to kill me, Johnny. You did try to kill me. Did I, Kathy? Did I? Are you sure? No, no, I did it. I did it. I did it because I loved you. I wanted you to love me, nothing else. Never to be away from me, not for one moment. How do I know you're not just saying that so I won't kill you now? Because I did it. I know I did it. You could never kill. Will you tell that to the police? Will you tell that to the newspapers? Will you tell it to all the people who look at me and turn away? Yes, I'll tell them all. Will you tell the police now? Yes, I will. Oh, what's the use? It won't bring anything back. You're the one who's sick, Kathy. Oh, Johnny. What'll I do? I'll help you. You'll help me? After what I did? You have to find your own way back. It might be easier if I walk with you.